All right, welcome back, everybody. Today is uh, episode three for Let's Play Magic Duels. We're just gonna keep it short and simple. Uh, not ready for versus battle yet. Simply just we don't have enough cards. <laughs> it's uh, absolute free to play deck, so we're gonna play medium difficulty, maybe hard if we have uh, time. But we'll see. So we're using a new deck this time, as opposed to uh, one that we used for the last one, which was what Control the Horde or something like that. I forgot what it was called. The Wild Word. I don't remember. It was one of the ones that the deck builder gave us. Uh, we're going to be using uh, Control Disguise today. <sighs> I feel like I don't need to see this anymore. No. Um, wow. I've got a lot of lands. I think that's okay. Um, I would say it's probably better to have enough lands than no lands, right? I hope I didn't make a mistake right there. <laughs> I guess I'll have to wait and see. Okay, so... The first thing that we would be able to play... We should play Mandarin River. Um, probably gonna follow up with a Plains card. Then an island card, depending on what else I get here. Yeah. So that's fine. So long as my opponent doesn't play anything this turn, I think I'm okay. I just want to try to make sure that I get the first minion on the board. Nope, not that lucky today. Okay, he's got something on the board. This is Menace. I don't remember this. Creature with Menace can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. Oh, that's pretty crazy. Actually, it's not that crazy, but it's very useful. Okay, let's get Blessed Spirits on the board here. Gotta make sure we have some presence. Okay, so we have an enchantment spell right off the bat. Ooh. You know I'm gonna play suppression bonds on there. And I give myself a nice uh, plus one plus one counter. that guy, get him out of the equation, give myself a nice plus three plus three counter, uh, skip, the attack phase, don't want no trouble. Uh, if he doesn't play anything this turn, I think I'm golden, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I'll eat the three damage. Now, must <laughs> I actually forget a very important mechanic of magic. Dominion cards also count as spells to count as spell? I can't remember. I think it has to say specifically non-creature or something like that, right? I don't know what to do, but since... Hmm. Could play Razorfoot Griffin to make sure I have another two damage that's not blocked every turn. Yeah, might as well. Cause you know what? The following turn I could play Frost Lynx to uh, tap any creature that needs to be tapped. Number of artifacts you control. How many artifacts does it control? It controls one artifact. So. What? <laughs> what? Wait, 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 wait. Where X is 3 plus the number of artifacts you control. Also, he was doing a total of 4 damage. 
Oh, that's so gross, man. Like, why? Oh, it has first strike. <laughs> this does not have first strike. Yeah. I'll block that. Oh, did he have- he has menacing on? He has menace. I must have missed that. Right? Why didn't he even give me the option? They should just auto... You know, let it go through. Like, let the attack go through if I don't have two minions at least to even block something. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield on your control, you may pay one. If you do, you should want to lose one life, you gain one life. Destroy target creature. Okay. So I can't let him get any more artifacts. That's it just for that. Um. So we'll get some damage down here. <sighs> Cause you know what, to be honest. This guy is probably gonna have menace every time he attacks. So do I wanna eat another three damage? Yeah, I think that's fine. I think I can. Actually, I could trade. Unless I'm mistaken, he's gonna deal one damage. What is this? Turn another article. Okay. But yeah, unless I'm mistaken, Sky Hunter Skirmisher should deal one damage before, and then one damage at the normal turn. So he'll kill the 3 2. Oh, but does he have Menace on though? He probably does, right? Oh no, he doesn't. He didn't turn on Menace. The hell was that? Oh, that enchantment. Yeah, that's a really strong enchantment. Just get something off the board immediately. <sighs> okay. I didn't want to play it right now. I wanted to save links for a bigger minion to tap to prevent either attack or blocking, but I need something on the board to deal some damage or block. Okay. I probably could have counter spelled that, actually, or counter man. Uh, I don't know why I didn't, but I want, I'm waiting to see if I could counter spell. Or countermand on minion. So yeah, I'll do the two damage. As of right now, next turn I should only be eating one damage anyways, which I think I can live with that. I gotta catch up in terms of some damage here until I get some board control. What is this nonsense? Equip one, two. Nah, we're gonna countermand that right now. Oh. Oh gosh. <laughs> I don't know why this is just. Why do I have to stop the timer every time just to play it? They should just let me drag it. But whatever. Alright. It is what it is. <laughs> if I missed a chance to stop that timer and missed a chance to countermand it, I would have been really upset. <clears throat> okay, so. I'll eat one damage. Okay, so reprisal is good to hold on to. In case he plays another big minion. So at this rate, of him doing one damage each turn, and me dealing two damage each turn, I'll eventually catch up and surpass him. So, in two more, in like two or three more turns, we're we're caught up, or I'm ahead. So that's fine. 
I just need to make sure that he actually plays a big card for me to play reprisal against. Sure, we'll play the skill quest because you know what? <laughs> it could be someone's first time watching Magic 2, so it's a good chance for them to learn how to play. Too. Equipment cards represent weapons, armor, and other items you can give your creatures to make them better. Most artifacts, including equipment, are colorless, so they go well in any deck. During your main phase, you can pay the equip cost to attach the equipment to a creature or move it from one creature to another. If the equipped creature leaves the battlefield, the equipment stays behind, ready to be equipped to another creature. In Man, this no. skill quest, your opponent will send two primal hunt beasts okay. after you. I get it. So we gotta survive. Right? What do we have here? I get another turn to re-equip it. Correct. Actually, I don't really know why I did that. Oh, okay. So basically, they just wanted me to block it and then re-equip it. That's a very <laughs> simple concept to learn. I gotta say though, I appreciate the skill quest. It really helps learn some of the mechanics. Success! A common tactic is to attack with an equipped creature and then move the equipment onto an untapped creature after combat. Okay, that's cool. I mean, that. <laughs> yeah, but as I was saying, I really appreciate the skill quest. It really makes it a lot easier to either learn the game or refresh your memory or both. Okay, so we have a problem here, and the problem the problem is that he has a 2-4 on the board, so my idea of giving 2, taking 1 damage is not going to work anymore, and I, I can't even block anything either, I can't even get rid of it. No, losing everything on my end. <clears throat> so I need a big draw. Okay. Alright, we'll see. You know, absolute free to play deck versus, I don't know, I don't know if this, uh, this is supposed to be free to play level or not. Well, he's got no flying, right? <clears throat> so that's fine. Let's just make sure this guy doesn't come up to attack us again. Even if it is just one turn to gain some sort of advantage. Um, unless I'm mistaken, he's got no way- oh shoot. <laughs> Whoops, I thought this was a flying creature too. I didn't realize, or I forgot rather, that I already had a Frostlet. Oh, so that was a very useless turn. Nothing, nothing happened there. <sighs> this could be a rough match. I got no choice, I'm just gonna have to take the damage. I 
I need a really big card here. That is not helpful at all. Okay, so on the bright side, I could trade in for full damage right now. So he down, he'll be down to nine. And at most, what, what he has on the board currently, I'll be down to five. So if we keep going at this rate, I do come out on top. I only have two turns of full damage to win. He's got three. Unless, of course, he plays another artifact or another minion, creature, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so very smart. He's only playing. He's only attacking with one. So he has something left to defend. Okay, so I could at least clear the board if I attack with both of my fossilings. Excellent. Yeah, that helps a lot. <laughs> I can, uh, so he's probably gonna block one. Uh, Fairy is gonna go for two face damage. No way he can block that. And one of the, one of the links die. That's fine. That's 100% fine. I need to catch up in terms of life. Or damage dealt, rather. So I have a four four guaranteed damage next turn. Should be interesting what happens. And he can't actually attack with everything he's got either. Well, yeah, he can. There will be no point. Yeah, so I'm just gonna block this guy right now. So I only take two damage. This is gonna trick up his sleeve, I think I'm good. Battlefield, you may search your library for assembly. Work a creature card, reveal it, put it into your hand, shuffle your library. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> I really hope he enchants that. <sighs> Equip. Equip that SOB. Oh, wow. Oh shoot, this is crazy. I, <laughs> I don't have a way to kill this guy. Wow. That, that play changed everything. Okay, so let's see what happens here. I think... I think I have to attack with only the fairy. That's great. I need everything else to block. And if I can survive the next turn. If I can survive the next turn, I should be able to kill just with the fly minions alone. Oof. Wow. And if I'm lucky, he'll put Inventor's Goggles on this self assembler. And I could prize him. Play reprisal, get rid of it. If I'm lucky. Thank God. <sighs> that worked out perfectly. Okay. So I can block all of this damage that's coming my way. That worked out <laughs> perfectly, exactly as I had hoped. So, actually, I don't know if it's a testament to the AI's difficulty level, or if it's just, um, 
my deck being really low budget, like free to play, not competitive, or maybe I'm just playing poorly. But these these games are very, very difficult, very competitive, and close every time. Came out on top. All right. So the next thing I want to do is, uh, if there's any additional skill quests, I just want to play a few so that everyone can follow along, learn a few more of the mechanics. Wow, you only get 10 gold for that? That's pretty brutal. <sighs> that was close. I can't even imagine how difficult the hard level is going to be. I don't, I don't think my deck can compete with hard difficulty. So, this this flying deck is I feel like it's not as good as the one I used last time. Okay, so here we're taking a look at the quest. So it's kind of like um, Hearthstone mechanic where you get three quests, but it looks like they had this cool event where everyone can participate. And I guess everyone everyone gets 60 points if it's achieved in the time frame, whether you participate in a ranked game or not, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. But it's cool that they have this. So pretty much all of this is against versus battles. Um, of which I'm not even close to playing yet. I don't have any cards that are competitive enough. But yeah, that's it for today. Uh, unless... Like, I, yeah, I don't see any plays where I could just play the skill quest. It'd be cool if they had that. What is this? I have to... Do I have to pay for these? Or is this how much I get to win if I complete these? Okay. Well, we finished getting Jorin... Jura last time, so I guess we could play Jossie Belair and get some cards. First... First I'm gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back. I'm gonna do sword mode. Let's check it out. Planeswalker cards represent incredible allies that stay on the battlefield and fight for you. They each start with some number of loyalty counters, shown in the lower right corner of the card. On each of your turns, during your main phase, you can activate one of your Planeswalker's abilities. These abilities will add to, or subtract from, your Planeswalker's loyalty. Zoom in on a Planeswalker to activate one of its abilities. You can attack an opposing Planeswalker with your creatures, instead of attacking your opponent. Also, your spells and abilities can deal damage to opposing planeswalkers instead of dealing damage to your opponent. When damage is dealt to a planeswalker, it loses that much loyalty. If a planeswalker's loyalty is zero, it's put into the graveyard. Two planeswalkers have joined the fight. The pyromancer Chandra on your side and the animist Nyssa across the battlefield. Nissa will soon activate her ultimate ability okay, and win the, the game. Yeah, we have to kill the other planes walker before we get wrecked. So let's zoom in. This is what Sanja's got for us here. Okay. So plus one will do two damage to a target creature. Ah, okay. Let's see, how do we win this? Very easy. First, we'll start by zapping that guy. We'll zoom in. Zap. And, uh, yep. Next thing to do is just attack. That's it. Boom. Done. <laughs> Probably took longer than it should have, but you know I had to read everything through and not make a mistake here. Great job. Cool. Planeswalkers are so powerful. All right. Thanks for watching. That's end of episode three. We're gonna do 
another story mode for Pali Kaladesh uh, from episode 4, as well as uh, hard difficulty for AI. And then the last episode is going to follow up with playing a versus match against real people and a quick review over the game. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.